So Jean-Francois, you and the vaccines colleagues have now established the mRNA platform. You've already put a couple mRNAs into the clinic for certain viral pathogens. Tell us about how the mRNA vaccine platform is likely to evolve. So the first front is really to bring the technology where we believe it should be for classical vaccines. Certainly moving forward project against respiratory viruses, influenza, RSV, but also some bacterial pathogens like chlamydia and acne. And actually our ambition is to bring six new candidates in the clinic uh, by 2025. Wow, very ambitious. Yes, but we are very confident we can do it because we have a wonderful team in the mRNA Center of Excellence combining expertise from uh, all around the planet, uh, people joining us, excited to join us and uh, really moving at pace in terms of delivering what we need to, uh, to be successful there. So Jean-Francois, the mRNA platform, is that going to enable some new frontiers in vaccinology? We are convinced that uh, mRNA vaccine could enable us to develop therapeutic vaccine rather than preventing disease to uh, occur uh, in people who already have the disease, try to modulate the disease or even cure some of them. You know, it's really exciting to think about what pathogens we might be able to conquer with the mRNA approach that really we really couldn't even touch with current technology. I think it's very early in the therapeutic side compared to vaccines. You know, some of the um, nearer term applications of mRNA for therapeutics we think could be in reprogramming immune cells. And particularly, the first applications would be oriented towards immune cells that are reprogrammed to fight cancer. Longer term, you know, we hope to do uh, things beyond the immune system. If we can get these nanoparticles customized to go to specific types of cells in the body, then we could actually go in and fix genetic defects in patients who are born with various types of genetic disorders. So John, what, what do you see as the biggest challenge for you to deliver all this tremendous innovation in therapeutic areas beyond vaccines? Unlike vaccines where it's probably adequate to use the mRNA to express a bit of a viral protein at a relatively modest level. In therapeutics, we may have delivery issues. We, it may be that the mRNA has to get into a specific type of cell, depending on what condition you're trying to address. We also might have to do repeat dosing and even chronic administration over the life of a patient because of the chronic administration would also have to be really um, exceptional so that patients don't experience side effects from taking their medicine. So John, we know that uh, uh, to be successful in uh, uh, developing new transformative medicine, we need quite a few different platforms. So that you use the best platform for the best target. Box, but one of the things that's fun to think about is how you can bring them together. The same kind of chemistry that we use to make small molecule drugs today is used to formulate that lipid shell around which the mRNA is packaged in a little spherical lipid nanoparticle and then use chemistry to conjugate onto those either antibodies or nanobodies that then bind receptors on the surface of the desired cell type, whether that's an immune cell or a muscle cell or a liver cell, so that that mRNA gets delivered where we want it to go. And so this brings biologics, synthetics, and mRNA all together in a, in a single product, a uh, single medicine. So uh, looks a bit like science fiction, honestly, but uh, this is potentially what we need to fix these uh, very complex and uh, life-saving uh, medicine that we want to develop. Yeah, Jean-Francois, you know, our job is to turn science fiction into science fact. Exactly.